So I have this uh, beautiful asset that was on the marketplace. Uh, it's still on the marketplace. It's called Science Laboratory, and there's some super cool looking science stuff in here. Uh, lots of lots of great assets. Beautiful environment, and it was free for the month ages ago, and that's how I got it in my little library. Uh, and I noticed that when you play this thing with the play and editor, uh, these guys spin around. And I thought this would be great for my little cinematic sequence. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can get these spinning in a sequencer quite easily, real straightforward. So the reason they spin when you play them up here, but let's say, let's pick this guy and add it to our sequencer. And it doesn't spin when you do this, or play, or render, it's not spinning. It's because the sequencer doesn't run the tick. And if we look at this, uh, the event tick is what's driving these rotations. So the event, at each tick, we're going to increment the rotation a little bit. That's all this blueprint is doing for these different pieces. Uh, and you can control the speeds. So we need to modify this to use a different custom uh, event that we can use for our tick. And we'll make a custom event, and we'll call it something like sequencer tick. And then we'll just add this together to this one here. So they're both going to be able to make this machine run, either playing with the simulate or our sequencer uh, will be able to do that. But there's an important uh, thing for our thing we need to call in editor. So we need this to be callable in editor so we can confirm that it's working. So we'll close that, and we'll save that, and we'll close that. And then we've got this thing added to our sequence. Already, I'm going to rewind to the beginning and add a new event track of the type repeater. And then we should get a bar from wherever our playhead is to the end, to our red post. Uh, still nothing happens. But if we go in here and right click on, a, on that bar, we can bind this to that custom function we just made. So that custom function is in here. And it, if we type in sequence, we can see sequence or tick right there. And it adds this to our level, uh, not level blueprint, our director blueprint, which is kind of like a level blueprint, but for sequences. So this is a special kind of uh, blueprint that tells sequences when you play, do this stuff. So now when I scrub, I still don't see it. And it's because I think it's because we need to call an editor here as well. And now you can see that when I move the playhead, those things are spinning. And it looks like maybe if I play backwards, they might spin backwards, but that's not the case. Uh, and you need, if you needed that, you'd have to set that up special. This is, what this is doing is it's saying for each change here, increment the uh, you know, call tick once. So if I do like normal and step through this one frame at a time, it will move the expected amount. But if I jump a frame, it will only move one tick, no matter where I jump to. Uh, sorry, one frame's worth of delta time is technically what it's doing. But anyway, there's an easy way for you to call your sequences in the blueprint. Now you could do lots of things. I'll show you another quick example uh, that I already have set up in another scene file. So here's another example here. I've got a sequence that I've set up with this special blueprint that keeps the camera centered with a little bit of lag between these two, these two mannequins. Uh, and the way that works is like this. I've got a special look at actor that's not visible here, but it's this thing that is uh, balanced between these two hips. And this blueprint has a couple of variables. Uh, this blueprint uh, is doing the same thing. I have a special function evaluate from the sequencer, uh, and it's it finds a, you know, a particular bone and attaches a spring arm to that bone. And we put the camera at the end of the spring arm, essentially is what it's doing. Uh, and, and then I just hide that. And then I've got some attributes here that I can set on my details panel for which two skeletal meshes and which cinematic camera I want to stay balanced between those things. 
uh, and it lets me, you know, put this thing and evaluate in the sequencer, and the camera stays steady, and then I render this this out. So there's uh, another example of how you might use this feature to, you know, do some other kind of action that you would be hard to do otherwise in your sequencer, like keep a camera uh, aligned to these uh, these characters. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful for somebody. There's uh, a little, you know, little short video. Uh, until next time.